Having said all of that, I think I've been tweeting for a while. I don't know whether you've been following, though, um, and hinting at the unprecedented dispersed nature of the animosity and pushback, first arising from risible and mimetic pushback, uh, through to, say, for example, uh, reactions on Facebook as a proxy indicator of emotions and what in academic uh, parlance you call uh, emotional balance, around which haha and angry are two very important um, proxy indicators. And that has been growing for a while. I mean, I put up um, the graphs on just Gota's Facebook page, which is, of course, significant because his own Facebook page is uh, a site of extremely high surveillance. And given the man's um, disposition and his history, it is quite significant to see the growth of haha and anger and indeed the qualitative nature of the commentary, particularly after the second wave uh, in um, October um, 2020, I believe. And so that was a decline that uh, the president and the government never really recovered from, um, and certainly not from the heights of 2019 and early 2020 even. Uh, and then that has been an inexorable decline. And with that decline in engagement has come uh, an incline in uh, both the reactions and, of course, the comments. Um, uh, and so this has been brewing for a very long time. And again, I, I, did, the, I did the go home gota again. I don't know whether you saw it. I mean, this was about um, two, three weeks ago already when um, those hashtags were beginning to trend. And I, and, I, and, I, and I put it up, you know, and in as much as could be determined, um, the, we are with Kota, led by Melinda, or started by Melinda, had very specific, clearly identifiable nodes or accounts that were trying to push that through. And in terms of volume also, it wasn't that much. And what I said was also, listen, look here, who's not tweeting that? Who's not? tweeting the hashtags of Charita and rather all of the Port City bros, as Iro called it, um, even Namal weren't using the, the hashtag. So that's, that's, a, that's a significant signal and indicator as well. But with the go-home hashtag on Twitter alone, two, three weeks ago, it was like um, the Milky Way, something out of Hubble, where... Um, it was incredibly dispersed. You know, there wasn't one source that was, uh, you know, with computational uh, modeling. You can figure it out very quickly if it's just a few or one or many uh, or, 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 or a cluster that's uh, in a particular hashtag discussion leading it or um, what you call power centers within it. And it wasn't the case. That is an extraordinary data signature. I've never seen anything like it. Now, that resembles what we saw in the lead up to... Um, January 8th, 2015. So if the path dependency of that, and by the way, I mean, I also looked at TikTok, right? I mean, TikTok is awash with videos generating hundreds of thousands of views. That is also significant, Anand, as you can imagine, because TikTok isn't the demographic that even Instagram enjoys. It's a much younger demographic. It's obviously pre-franchise, but it's the beginning of the youth. It's the beginning of the teenager years, um, and maybe, for example, your late teens, whereas Insta is early 20s and, uh, you know, say 18 plus. So, And then, of course, Facebook pages and groups are used by much older people. So for TikTok to trend, not, not just trend, it is dominated by anti-Gota content. I mean, I, I, I remember tweeting at the time that there's no point in examining it with a data analyst perspective because there's nothing to examine. I mean, there's nothing that was for Gota. And the content, and I've tweeted it since as well. I mean, the content that has been trending since has been all, if not with the hashtag, then against Gota in spirit, form, tone, thrust, and timber. So, so TikTok's, you know, lost cause for the government. That's significant because uh, we're talking about a demographic who don't feel that their future is being served by the government. They might not be at the protests, but certainly they don't have a sentiment that you would have expected them to have, and they did have, in as much as could be determined, in 2019, around the election of Gotabe. So TikTok, Twitter, Facebook pages, Facebook groups, 
Um, hard to say what the other media are looking at. I mean, I can see that there's uh, even journalists are now openly tweeting against. Now, I mean, he's uh, saying what the F on Facebook and retweeting it on uh, and reposting it on Twitter. People are now more open um, to a degree that I never saw before. I never thought would be possible given, again, the nature of the white banning and the culture and Gotabia and all the stuff that he and the government are associated with, including, of course, the army and the police and the STF and uh, the state, uh, the arms of the state, um, who might actually come out with all their fangs as well in the days to come. But uh, you can see that uh, on social media, if it is reflective of the anger on the ground, which of course I'm also pegged into, but not so much as you, on account of, uh, you know, people I talk with, uh, aside from the social media, it's, uh, it's very worrying. It's very worrying. I have been calling, I mean, I've been warning for a time on Twitter that this is going to spill over um, and that uh, you can't contain uh, all of this by putting military at petrol stations. So what happened or is happening tonight is no surprise. It's certainly not something that came about suddenly. And with regard to the 3rd of April, I certainly haven't, I mean, I haven't looked at it, to be honest. That's a simple answer. I just haven't had the time to look at it. Um, and I don't know whether it is now implicated with uh, political party affiliations. May, may well be, and you know, we have to accept that, that it's possible. But my simple, I mean, so my simple answer is I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at the propagation or the production or the providence. But the thing is, the SJB and the UNP are horrible at anything to do with social media. I mean, they just don't have any capacity whatsoever. Uh, and I wouldn't, I mean, so, I mean, the JVP is not on social media. So, um, Sri Lanka has been fairly lopsided in that regard where the Rajapaksas have dominated in, from, from the output and the manipulation through to the surveillance. Um, and that's also quite extraordinary now because even with the full weight of that experience and investment at a state to, uh, uh, telco level, uh, through to what they once commanded as, uh, a capture so complete of social media that nobody else really mattered has now gone. It's now, it's, it's, it's gone. And so in that vacuum are new things that uh, one has never seen before. One has never studied or observed or seen grow. 2015, as I said, is, an, is, is, is not a fair comparison. The, the, the landscape has shifted considerably, grown, expanded, become more complicated, more actors, um, and certainly more anger, more dissent, more frustration, um, uh, and uh, you know it goes with that tweet that Asanga said, um, you know maybe two three tweets ago tonight, where he also fears that uh, what was once risible and funny, even in the dark acerbic humor and wit, is now moving into something much much darker and more violent and you know offline and kinetic as well. Um, so. Even if it is not the case that the 3rd of April was galvanized or is being galvanized by one or a few political entities, it's very likely the case that that is the path that the irrigation of the frustration will take invariably in terms of capture or instrumentalization or even weaponization by political entities who want to see the government go on. By the way, that may be well within the government as well. So, I mean, all of these conspiracies around something that is being designed by the SJB, UNP, JVP, or some other person, may well be, be well, may well be from within the government. There's a lot of frustration, as you can imagine and know, uh, from within the government as well. And I go back to the silencers as well, which for me in data studies is as important as what is registered. And uh, I found that really telling um, when I did that at the time around the Twitter hashtag. And uh, that is, if that is indicative of anything, it surely says that not everybody in the government is on board with the executive or the first family. So this might be, well, uh, may, might, might well be something that comes from within the government as well. You know, you really can't say, uh, Anand, at the end of the day, uh, one has to see how this all pans out. That certainly may be the narrative of the government, which is then convenient to suggest that this is either internal, uh, external or international conspiracy, and you go back to the same old vocabulary, really. But whether that has any basis in truth, 
I don't know with regard to the 3rd of April because I haven't looked at it, but it doesn't seem to be the case given all of what I said that there is some dark design by a political entity or party that is leading up to the 3rd of April. Very much seems to be organic, dispersed, democratic in the nature of uh, it is rooted in the people, geographically dispersed, dispersed across platforms and within each platform dispersed across a group of accounts without any one uh, or few power centers at the present moment leading up and uh, supporting and undergirding what can be now seen spilling over offline and into kinetic uh, forms as well. So 